Hey everyone, it has been a while since this one's been on camera. This is the 98 uh, 520XI Toro wheel horse and I've kind of got an unusual project for this one. It's common for me to put young kids on these tractors who are not so experienced and let them run around in the field with them. And this one just happened to have a young girl. She was about nine years old maybe, or 10. And she could barely keep the seat switch happy and hit the go pedal at the same time. And what happened was that she stalled it and kind of was standing up and basically broke the key switch. Just sheared the whole insides of it. Now, the funny part about it is when you replace a switch, normally you make sure that all the terminals do the same thing. But the terminals on the old switch were not labeled and um, all of the wiring diagrams that I've been able to find for this one are a little bit different than any switch I was able to find. Even the ones that said this is for a Toro XI um, still was just not quite right. So there are a lot of wires, there are fuses. I'm half tempted just to plug that switch in see what happens but I don't really want to blow fuses and mess things up so I think I'm gonna get my meter out so I have yet to get a manual out or look at any diagrams but this is all just speculation right now I'm using the colors as common sense so right now I'm on that orange and I can see that there's an orange wire for the headlight circuit. So I'm thinking this is the accessory key. Um, now, I'm on continuity. And so I will receive a tone. But this is to ground. And see there's resistance. Even just one ohm to ground could mean that that's resistance through, say, that light bulb. Okay? Now, if I hook up to this one, I get an instant zero ohms. There's no resistance, there's full continuity. So there's a difference between a resistance and a false continuity and a sure actual continuity. Um, so maybe if I were to disconnect that light and I believe there's actual live taillights, then maybe I would have no continuity um, to ground um, as far as my meter says. But I'm assuming that that is the light accessory, okay? And this one here is the 12 volt battery. So, I'm going to use um, just those two for now and determine if this battery in, um, that would be my input, will give power to that in the accessory mode. And then I'll figure out which one of these is the starter. And I believe this is a magneto style um, switch so um, I don't think there's power to a coil I don't know for sure I will look into that but um, one of those is probably a common ground and the other is also switched when I turn the switch off to ground so um, that would tell me battery uh, accessories one of those is starter, and then I'm guessing one's ground and one is magneto. But, like I said, that's all speculation. 
I will prove that before I just hook up a new switch. So I'm not normally a daring person, but I decided I'd just give it a shot. I had my battery and accessories circuit figured out and just figured I'd wing it on the rest. Switch has been replaced and I did accidentally break that hour meter clip while I was uh, installing everything but for 798 hours this thing runs very well and uh, um, it should be above freezing another day or two here and so I'm going to pressure wash this real good. I'll probably take all the screens and tins off that I can and get all of that gunk out of everything and uh, clean this up good. Um, still on the fence of what to do with it. I feel like I'm probably going to keep it and stick a front end loader on, but I don't know. We'll see. It'd really be cool to have a 1054 front end loader, but I think this is going to be the way to go. The battery was a little bit low after sitting for about two months, so I just stuck it on the charger, and it's looking good now. It's got a full charge, and so I have a few other batteries I've pulled from some of the tractors I just put in storage. And I will get those on the trickle charger and make sure they're charged for the winter as well. Thanks for watching. Take care.